Okay, so um, we're going to kind of do the next exponent lesson here, and this is going to talk about negative exponents. So um, we're going to kind of get into the same stuff we were doing on the last video, which is the exponent rules one. Uh, but we're going to talk about the effect these negative exponents have. So basically what you're going to do is um, under, we're going to talk about how to understand what these things mean. So what I did here is I made a little chart. Um, you can see 2 to the power of 3 means 2 times 2 times 2, which is, has a value of 8. Um, 2 to the power of 2 is 2 times 2, which has a power of 4. 2 to the power of 1 is 2, which has uh, the value of 2. So everything you see here, nothing surprising. There should be nothing new. Um, I wanted to make sure we talked that we we see that you know that there's no argument that this is how things work before we get into the strangeness, which is what happens when you get something to the power of zero, what happens when you get things to the negative power. So that's what we're gonna do. So if you actually look here, you can see eight, four, two. What's happening every time is it's actually dividing by two every step back that I go. Um, and you can see that it actually makes sense because every time we add another power, we're basically doing another times two every time, right? So if we wanna go backwards, we go backwards, which is divide by two. So if we continue with that pattern, um, two would actually become a one. And so that's what two to the power of zero is. So um, keep in mind, that shows that anything to the power of zero is one. Now that seems very strange. Usually if I ask people, hey, what's two to the power of zero? They'll say zero, but you can actually see it's one. It follows the pattern. Now let's continue with the pattern. If I take one and I divide it by two, I'm gonna get one over two. And if I divide that by two, I'm gonna get one over four. And if I divide that by two, I'm gonna get one over eight. And hopefully you can see there's a bit of a pattern here. Um, when I'm doing negatives, it's actually the same pattern you see down here, it's just going the other way. And that is because two to the power of one is two. But when it's a negative, you actually put it down here like that. And you can see my exponent becomes positive, right? And then it gives me one half. This one is one over two to the two, which is four. This is one over two to the third. So. What a negative exponent means is negative exponents are fractions, okay? It has nothing to do with the, with the outcome being negative or positive. It just means it's another way of writing a fraction. It's actually the inverse, okay? So sometimes when I do this, kids will question it. They'll say, well, maybe that's how it works for two. What if we try it with three or four or five or like another number? And so I'm gonna use three just because it's a small number. So if we look, 27 divided by 3 is 9. So if we divide that by 3, which, like I said, just like here, every time we go this way, like down the table, um, we're multiplying by an additional one. So if we want to go up the table, we're actually going to divide. So if I do 3 divided by 3, I get 1. And you can see, again, this rule right here, that any number to the power of 0 is actually equal to 1. It's not equal to 0. And again, this would be 1 over 3 to the power of 1, which is 1 third. This is 1 over 3 to the power of 2, which is 1 over 9. This is 1 over 3 to the power of 3, which is 1 over 27. So let's kind of apply this to what we did in the last video. And the rule as far as what we were doing is the same. So what this says is, remember, we add the exponents up. So these have the same base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 3 plus negative 3, which is going to be x to the power of 0, which we just learned is equal to 1. Okay, so um, the only difference in terms of what we actually do here is going to be when we get to the final answer, we're going to have to sometimes change it a bit. But as far as what I did, that is on the last video, and if you haven't had the opportunity to look at that, you probably want to watch the video um, Exponent Rules 1 on this channel. But now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did here and organize it a bit, which always seems a big theme when you're doing this, is I'm going to um, organize this. So I have negative 3 times 2, and then I've got my x terms. So 
So I have x to the negative 2 and x to the 5, right? Okay, so this is negative 6. And then 5 plus negative 2 is x to the 3rd. So nothing happened there. You could see it follows the rules exactly like last time. It's just that when we're adding the exponents, actually one of them is a negative, so you're subtracting. But that's the only difference. Now let's see what happens when we change it just a bit more. So what I'm going to do is here's this negative thing that I talked about last time. If you see a negative in front of the variable, go ahead and pop a 1 in there. It makes it a lot easier to understand. So I'm going to do negative 1 times 2. And then I've got my x terms. So there's one here and there's one here. So I have an x to the negative 2 and an x to the negative 3. And then I've got a y to the third power here. And I've got a y to a negative 5 power here. OK, so now this is negative 2. This is, if we add these up, this is x to the negative 5. And then this is y to the negative 2. OK? All right, so here's where things are going to be a little bit different than last time. So this is the answer. It follows the same rules. But we've got a problem. Our problem is we have these negative exponents, and it's a rule that someone made up, it was not me, that you can't leave an answer with negative exponents. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn them positive. And all you do is you take this part here and this part here with the negative exponents, and you put them down on the bottom. Now, why do we do that? Quick review of what I just talked about. We do it for this reason. You can see 2 to the negative 1 became 1 over 2 to the power of 1. 2 to the negative 2 became 1 over 2 to the power of 2 down here on the bottom. So we're going to apply that rule to this. So I have negative 2 on the top. This x to the 5 is going to be here. And this y to the 2 is going to be there. And that's our answer. So this is primarily how this is different than the last lesson, is that when you get the answer, you have to sometimes do a little bit more to it. But you could see that that's not always true. Sometimes these come to a positive, so we just leave it alone. All right, let's look at this last example. So I have a 3 and I have a negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and group those guys up here. I have an x, and I have an x to the negative 3. And I have a y to the negative 3 and a y to the 5. So when I add these up, um, this here is going to be a negative 6. Um, this is going to come to x. This is a 1, right, because there's nothing there. So that's a negative 2. And this is going to be a negative 3 plus 5, so that's y to the 2. So what happens is on this one, it's only this part right here needs to be rewritten. We can't have x to the power of negative 2. So I'm going to leave the 6 up here. I'm going to put the y up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and drop the 2 down here. And that is my final answer.